Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for October 2018. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out my massive amount of free resources there. Also, if you'd like to have me look at your chart through a live reading, I'm off of my long sabbatical from taking on new clients, so you can book a reading with me at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So what's going on in October? We have lots of planets in Libra. We have birthdays. We have new moon in Libra. We have Venus retrograde. So it's a month very much about Libra and with this major story of Venus retrograde. So we're going to go into all of that. The first thing I want to talk about is birthdays. If you've watched my reports for at least a year, then you know that birthdays are one of my favorite times. Birthdays open up a portal for your desires. The sun in the in the astrological chart represents our desire, our wishes, what we want. So when the sun in the sky gets back to the point where it was in your chart, a portal opens for your desires. That's what birthday wishes are about. They're astrologically based. So you get 10 birthday wishes. You want to say them out loud. You want to write them down and you want to feel them as if they're coming true. If you'd like to have more guidelines for how you can maximize your wishes, just do a search for making wishes come true, Annie. And my video on um, using astrological power periods for making wishes come true will come up. So definitely check that out and happy birthday. For those of you who are watching for your rising sign, this is very exciting for you too, because when the sun moves over the spot in your chart that is your ascendant point from your um, solar chart where the sun is on the, you know, on the horizon there in the chart, that's a major rebirth for you as well. So regardless of whether it's your rising sign or your sun sign, this is a time of new rebirth, clean slates, and new cycles beginning. Okay, so we've got, like I said, the sun's moving through Libra, Mercury's moving through Libra, we have um, the new moon on October 8th um, in Libra. Again, you get, new, you get new moon wishes, so anything about Libra-related topics, it's when you make wishes that align with the sign's energy, it boosts the wishes even further. So wishes about partnership, relationships, clients, diplomacy, coming to agreements, um, anything like that is amazing to wish for or anything else. So the new moon is on October 8th and it's at 15 degrees of Libra. So if you have if your birthday is on October 8th or close to that, or if you have your rising or moon at 15 degrees of Libra, then this new moon is going to be even more powerful for you. If you have your birthday between the 3rd and the 13th, or your degrees for your Libra placements are between 10 and 20 degrees, you'll still benefit um, tremendously extra from this new moon. Okay, Everyone can have new wonderful things. Every Libra placement can have beautiful effects, make their wishes, have new beginnings. But those of you in the 10 to 20 degree range, especially closer to 15 degrees, and for the 3rd to the 13th, especially um, closer to the 8th, it'll be even more for you all. Okay, so let's talk about Venus retrograde. Venus rules love and romance, beauty, design, self-esteem, finance, business, money. So it covers a massive amount of areas of experience as humans. So that's why I spent a lot of time putting together resources for Venus Retrograde because it covers so much ground. So we've got four months where we're working with this, September through into December. And it rules all these different areas. So I'm gonna give you pieces throughout this video, but definitely check out my search for Annie Botticelli, Venus Retrograde, and watch my very comprehensive video, read my very comprehensive blog, and I also have a blog series, 12 individual blogs about Venus Retrograde through the different houses. So I'm going to cover for you the houses that Venus is going to be retrograde in for each Libra placement, and I'll give you some things to note. Um, that's going to be my focus for this video, but definitely also look up my Venus retrograde in Scorpio and Libra blogs because that's the sign, those are the signs that it's in for everybody. And I will mention a few key points, but you can see more detail about what these things can bring up and what, what you can do with it. Okay, so Venus is going to be retrograde for early degree placements, that's going to be in the second house 
and it will probably, yeah, even some of your early degree placements, you'll have that go back into the first house too. Middle degree placements, you'll have the retrograde predominantly in the first house and later degree placements, you could dip a little bit into that 12th house, but most of you are going to experience a predominant first house um, retrograde. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what that looks like. So for everybody, the focus is going to be on yourself, your physical body, okay? And what you do with your physical body. So how you present yourself to the world, your image, you know, anything having to do with this. Now I have to give you the cautionary note right here from the beginning. Even though this is going to make you reevaluate things, it's not the best time to take action. So like, let's say you wanna cut all your hair off. Let's say you want to change something radically about your physical body. So you wanna get a tattoo. Let's say you want to, you know, buy all new clothes. Venus retrograde is not the best time to do that because you're going through a deliberation process and by the end of the cycle, the process may place you in a different, with a different outcome or a different interest than when you started the deliberation process. So any point along the retrograde cycle, you don't have all the information. So if you pick a point anywhere in there and you do something big, those weeks that follow or months that follow can bring a radical change in how you would have done it. We don't want you to be radically considering the body art or the hairdo or the expensive wardrobe after the fact, right? So this is a great time. Like if you wanna get new clothes and you wanna re-update your image, you can create a, you know, a, you can create a board, a pin page or something where you're like getting your idea. So basically this is an amazing time for researching, for feeling into things, for feeling things out, for trying things on in a low stakes way, like experimenting. But it's not the best time for making big decisions, okay? Now, if you have an emergency surgery and you have to have that happen, don't worry about it. That, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about aesthetics, okay? So I do, I do get that question a lot. Now, if it's a voluntary surgery that can wait and you'll be totally fine, you may have an easier time recovering from it when Venus is in retrograde. That is a possibility. But again, don't put yourself in a bad position. If something has to be done, just do it and don't worry about it. In general, Venus rules the physical body, so anything having to do with your physical body, how you treat it, how you let other people treat it, boundaries, your diet, your you know, um, exercise, your how you feel about yourself, your self-care. This is a really big area. So things that happen to us in our very early childhood that are affecting how we are and who we are now can come up, especially during this Venus retrograde cycle, that's another reason why making big decisions in love or money or other things is not the best idea because so much is changing and from day to day you're not seeing clearly. That's one of the big things about Venus retrograde is you're not seeing clearly. So we don't want you making an important life-changing decision from a point of not having clarity. You may think you have clarity, but if you give it a week or something, you might have complete clarity about a completely different thing. Okay, so this is, this is the time to heal childhood things, birth trauma, very specifically for this placement, if how you were born was very traumatic to you or your mother or anyone else around you, that energy can very much come up here and can affect everything in your life. So psychological things, you know, understanding what your mother was experiencing when she was in the, when you were in the womb can help you understand things that were imprinted and you can do something about them at this time in a bigger way. So how you put yourself out into the world, like maybe you're an architect, but you want to be a dance teacher. You know, this energy very much rules how you want to be known and what you have to do to change that. But again, it's not the best time to like take this big action unless it just comes to you or intuitively, or you know, there are always gonna be caveats to this. You have to follow your flow, but it's just the time to just try everything on. So you don't wanna get rid of garments and things that you love uh, or, or things that, you know, beauty things during this time because again, you're not seeing clearly and you may give away your most favorite item and then you'll be like, what, why did I do that? <laughs> so here's what it's good for. 
It's a supreme time to strengthen self-esteem. It will likely be called into question, but a renewed sense of self-esteem could also come from the transit and the work. Past life regression, psychotherapy, counseling, anything you know having to do with affirmations, subliminal messaging, exercise, positive diet and lifestyle, self-care. I like the mantra, I commit to radical self-care. That's my affirmation for you at this time. Reevaluating what you're bringing out into the world, these vocational shifts. But again, you know, you can take action on some small things, low stakes things, things that are manageable, things you can afford, research things, you know, even take some classes if it's not too expensive and you can afford it, like you're trying it on. But, you know, because you, you might be trying to figure out what you really want to be when you grow up. And from the astro astrological standpoint, people don't really have a great idea of what they want to do with their lives until after their Saturn return, which is like 30. So this is like, you know, this it's set up pretty bad. We go to college, we spend all this money only to figure out at some point we want to do something totally different. And then there's all this debt from them, whatever. So this could be bringing this up. Okay. So if you can afford some classes, that could be fine. You can reevaluate your body in wardrobe and fashion and make pin boards or whatever, have some ideas of what you want to do. Just, you know, don't put too much into doing it. Take impeccable care of your body temple. So return to or create deep care practices that nurture your body and your mind and deepen your relationship with yourself. All your relationships are based on your primary relationship and that's why this transit is so amazing for revamping that. So my favorite tools for this are The Presence Process by Michael Brown, Marriage of Spirit by Leslie Temple Thurston with Brad Laughlin, Louise Hay, anything by her, um, on any of those things. So those of you in, so that's all placements will be experiencing what I just listed. You very early degree placements, you might have energy in the second house. Okay. So that's about money and that's about, um, your finances. There's also self-esteem in there. There's also, you know, um, how you make money. So you all in that area, you might be asking the questions, do you have a budget? Should you have a budget? Do you need to change your budget? Is it working for you? Are you in debt? What can you do about it? Are your financial circumstances sustainable? Are you saving money? If not, when should you start? How can you start? Are you wasting money? These are all things that the second house Venus retrograde can bring up. And honestly, even though I'm listing this for the early degree placements, these are general Venus retrograde questions that everybody may have come up every, even every sign because Venus rules the second house. So this energy of the second house, like your money, your, you know, how do you want to live? Do you want to have more luxuries? Do you want to live more simply? These are all things that are going to come up or you can proactively delve into them. But again, try not to take too much action on them. Just kind of ask the questions. Do you want to, you can take small steps, low stakes steps, steps that you can manage. Are you making money? Do you enjoy how you're making money? Is the sacrifice being made worth it? Um, is there a better way? What can you do now to ensure your future security? What steps can you take to um, improve your financial picture? So, you know, if you have ideas in your mind, like I have to work hard to get by, I can't see my family much if I'm going to um, appropriately ensure their financial security. Like all of these things are belief systems usually that we picked up from our parents and society. So you may have to get into the psychology of the mindset to clear the mindset in order to change the experience. And this Venus retrograde could be amazing for that. So those are the things that are most on my mind for Libra for this month. Now I want to talk a little bit more about Venus retrograde in my shorter um, general transit report some days that are sweet and some days to watch. So I'm calling the theme of October, 2018 for all signs, Venus retrograde on the positive tip. We've already talked about what Venus retrograde in the house that it's retrograde for your sign can look like for you and some strategies to best utilize that. And now I want to give you some general things, especially some positive things, but also with a few cautionary notes and just a reminder that really you have to go, Watch my Venus retrograde video, Annie Botticelli Venus retrograde, and definitely look at the written version in my blog at AnnieHelpsYou.com because there's so much to know about this transit. It's so long. It's from October 5th through November 15th as the actual retrograde, but a month before and a month after is the shadow period when we're going to still, these rules will apply. So one of the best things that Venus retrograde is amazing for 
is working on self-esteem. Everything that Venus rules, love, beauty, design, money, comes back to this energy of relationship with self. So our relationship with money and business, our relationship with other people, our relationship with how we feel like we look, all has to do with our self-esteem. So that's why in general it's not favored to try to push out in any of these other arenas because it's really a time to locate and clear issues that are holding you back from the inside. So inner work, prayer, meditation, affirmation, you know, anything where you can heal from trauma and anything that's negatively affecting your self-esteem is amazing for this time. Something else that's amazing for this time is to look to the past for improvements for love and money. Okay, so that means like if you did something with your partner in the past that worked really well, or if in general, you know, your you did certain things with your love life in the past that worked really well. There, there could be like a renaissance, a returning back to things that worked really well. Many people who are separated from their love will have them come back to them in Venus retrograde. Um, if there's someone that you're, you left off with and you're not sure about, sometimes they come knocking again in Venus retrograde. And it's a really amazing time to reconsider things. It's just an assess. It's just not the best time to commit to anything that you're figuring out from the assessments. Something that Venus retrograde is amazing for is for treasure hunters. If you are looking for a deal on something, unfortunately, this is coming from the fact that many people are not seeing clearly in money and they're selling things of value for emotional reasons at crazy low prices. So if you have money to spare, you could wind up picking up an amazing deal. It's just a, a treasure hunter's delight. Definitely be careful though, because it could also, something you buy could become a money pit. So you have to make sure that you're getting a really great deal and that like if it's a house or something, you really need to do as many inspections as possible and just make sure you're, you know you have all your bases covered, you know, um, extra inspections like sewage, septic, you know, whatever, everything that you can do to make sure that you know that what you're buying isn't going to have any negative surprises, then it could turn out really well. You just have to look out for that. So in general, going back to the past for love, going back to the past for money and business, things that worked in the past with money, clients from the past. Um, if you do something like you teach or offer something regularly, sometimes in a Venus retrograde, you'll have a bunch of people from the past who had been considering taking this offering might come out in full force. And of course it could happen the other way. You know, a lot of people do have financial issues like financial backlog where they have trouble with their finances. And then that's going to point to healing some inner issues that are causing these reflections or the lack of stability. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some, hit some sweet spots and hit some challenging spots in the month. Remember, definitely go to anniehelpsyou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter, because there I give you a write-up of this general transit in more detail with lots of dates of actual aspects, what the aspects are and what to look out for for each aspect so that you can plan ahead. I always send these out a month early. And if you are signed up for my newsletter and you're not getting these, I'm definitely sending them. I always send them meticulously on time. So you definitely check for like your spam promotions or social folders, uh, because if you're not getting in the inbox, they're going there. And then you can just uh, move it over to your inbox or whitelist the email on there to get them in there. Okay. So let's just do a quick review of some sweet spots. Um, well, actually let's do the challenging ones first. Okay. So we've got things to look out for on October 2nd, 5th, 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 23rd, 24th, and 31st with extra emphasis on those ones towards the end of the month, um, the 24th and the 31st. Now it's interesting because in general, the second half of the month has a lot better flow and sweet energy with the exception of those two spots. Okay. Those are oppositions with Uranus that can bring jolts and surprises that could be challenging. So just kind of tread lightly around those days. And then the other ones that I listed, you could see some challenges. Always look out around the full moon, which is like the 24th, because you know, there could be drama or there could be fulfillment, um, completion or fruition. And that's going to be in these energies of Taurus. So fullness, completion, drama, fruition coming to things involving money and business and self-worth. There's a topic coming up again, sensual delights, material resources, 
environmental and sustainability projects, boundaries, resistance to change, things like that. Oh, and anything having to do with your throat, vocal cords, thyroid gland, etc., could could bring things to light um, or bring things up to be dealt with. Okay, so I want to end off talking about the sweet spots. We've got some of the days that could turn out to be challenging could also turn out to be super sweet. So you'll hear when I list the sweet vibe days. And always remember when I give you these dates, we could feel the energies before or after the actual date because there's an orb of energy around each transit. So don't stick too heavily to the dates. Just kind of tune into how you are, are experiencing the energy. So sweet spot possibilities on the 5th, the 8th, the 15th, the 19th the 22nd, the 24th, the 26th, the 27th, and the 29th. In general, the second half of the month, like I said, has a lot of sweetness, um, with the exception of the 23rd, 24th, and the 31st, some things to look out for. But there's some really awesome things going on, like October 22nd, Mercury is making a beautiful aspect to Pluto. So your powers of persuasion are improved and your powers of perception are improved. Then there's also this October 27th with the sun in Scorpio making an amazing aspect to Saturn. So this is a great energy to get things done and also an enhanced possibility of being seen or acknowledged by somebody in a position that you want to notice you. So it could be like someone in your family that you've always been kind of chasing their approval or it could be somebody you know in the work world October 29th, there's this mixed bag, but it really has potential for a lot of good news and good luck. Mercury and Jupiter get together. So whenever any of these personal planets get together with Jupiter, the, the energy of luck you know, amplifies out and Mercury rules news. So some good news about money, about um, something involving your partner, it could be money from your partner, it could be your own money. Lots of magical potentials here. Of course, it could also bring intensity to conversations, you know, in the Scorpio realms or something like that. But in general, I'm looking for that day, hopefully, to have some, some good vibes. So overall, this month of October, some little awkward spots, and definitely the Venus retrograde is going to have this shadow. But if you understand the energies, as you will if you use all of the many resources that I made for you, then I think that this can be um, a really sweet month. And for the things that are challenging, you could really have pure alchemy to turn the lead to gold. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. You can also see more about my personal live readings, which I'm off sabbatical and I'm taking live, um, taking new clients now. If you've been wanting to have a reading and have me look at your chart, also, if you would love to learn astrology, check out my astrology apprenticeship program. I also have all kinds of other goodies on my website. If you want written horoscopes from me, they go into often different things than I focus on in the reports. So it's a really good written highlight and summary and includes great reads for each sign. So cozy by sweetstarlight.com. And if you're a traveler and you wanna see my astrology travel reports to see what days to look out for, specifically for travel, then check out Astrology Kissed Travel Bliss. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.